Welcome to the Manders Mindset Podcast. Here you'll find both monologue and interviews of entrepreneurs, coaches, healers, and a variety of other people, where your host, Amanda Russo, will discuss her own mindset and perspective and her guest's mindset and perspective on the world around us. Manders and her guests will help explain to you how shifting your mindset will shift your life. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Manders Mindset. I'm your host, Amanda Russo, and I'm here today with a very special person, a woman named Liz Jimenez, who I recently got connected with about two months ago when I went to Utah for teacher training for Breathwork Detox. She was volunteering there and helping out and I learned a lot from Liz in a short period of time. She really helped me overcome a lot of things I didn't even realize I needed to actually overcome. She helped show me firsthand how transmuting your fear into excitement can change your life. And I knew with just the weak experience that I had with Liz that Everybody who listens to her speak would definitely, definitely benefit from it. So I'm here with Liz today. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, thank you. Thank you, Amanda, for having me on. I'm always about sharing love, wisdom, and knowledge to anyone who's willing to receive the information, right? This is why we are here. This is our purpose here on this beautiful world is to expand, to grow, to evolve together as a collective consciousness. So thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's an honor. It's a pleasure. So we can burst. We can vibe tonight. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. So a little backstory. Liz helped me overcome a big fear of mine that I experienced when I went to Utah. There were a lot of different challenges that we all had to go through. Some things like a cold plunge, which for me was no big deal. Then there was a cave we needed to go into. It was nighttime, it's pitch black, had lights on our helmets, okay. But once we got down there, then we were taking the lights off. And that, to me, nope, I was ready to abort the mission. That was not something I, I was not leaning into that. Very true. So, I'm a backstory to your backstory. (laughs) So, through this journey, we're taking on this secret journey, this journey into the abyss, into the cave of wonders is what I call it to everyone. Um, Manders and her group because your group was like all in all um, a lot of them had the fear of the dark (laughs) and as we're journeying we're all walking you know telling stories laughing you know trying to like build up uh, the excitement or the fear and trying to turn it into something positive and not let it consume your mind right because throughout the whole entire time this 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 little being up here this beautiful mind that we have can play the biggest tricks on us so as we're walking and we're journeying you know manders it you explain you make it very presently known that you're you're afraid of the dark and i'm like okay phenomenal that's great like are you terrified of the dark yeah i'm ter- oh my i'm i'm terrified i'm terrified really wow so how do you sleep manders I asked her that same question. She's looking at me right now laughing. I asked her, how do you sleep? Do you sleep with your eyes open or do you sleep with your eyes closed? I stopped her dead in her tracks because everyone knows the answer to this question. You sleep with your eyes closed. So if your eyes are closed, then you face the dark every single night when you're going to go to bed. You no matter what, you take it on, you sit with it, you love it, you live it, you embrace it. People love sleep. So if you have that kind of energy, if you have that kind of vibration towards sleep, 
what makes it so different going into a cave? It's just as dark. It's just as unaware and suspenseful because you never know what kind of what kind of dreams you're gonna have. I have wild ass dreams. So my dreams are journeys, like a complete fifth dimensional journey type experience. But it's um it's surrendering to the uncomfortability and it's surrendering to those moments where you have to more more so trust in the universe. Trust that the universe is gonna have your back, which they always, you know, they always do. Trust that these experiences and these moments that are presented to you are for something. It's for you hitting a, a different transition. It's for you overcoming a certain time point to make space in your body to receive an upgrade to evolve into a better, higher conscious. That's how I see it. No, I, I completely agree with all of that. It was just a very interesting way to think about it and look at it like that. Because you're not wrong. I do close my eyes every night to go to bed. But in the moment or when I was thinking about the dark, I was not thinking about the fact that I do that technically every day. Every single day. Every single day. You know, it's a part of your journey. It's a part of your experience is to face those dark shadows, to face those areas of the unknown, to face those areas that you don't know, to sit with it, learn from it, and grow from it. That's very true. So how would you say that you handle doing that by facing your fears and transmuting it? I... I have come to the realization in my journey, you know, um, to give people a little, you know, a little, a little, a little backstory real quick. Um, I'm a nurse as well. I do. I'm a breathwork practitioner and I'm also a nurse. I, I'm all about getting my cup filled. My body, my mind, my soul is always uplifted when I'm serving someone, you know, I'm serving the community. I'm serving the expansion of consciousness on evolving and growing as just higher beings that we are is tapping into and bridging that area within your body that you didn't even know you know was there so in my journey as being a nurse I had to make a decision I had to make a decision on on during the time of of the pandemic and all that of certain things I wanted to receive in my body or not you know I was raised always by my mother to be a firm believer of, um, especially with medicine, on not having to stick to Western medicine by the Bible. Like, it, we weren't raised that way. It was always like, my mom was very conscious about the stuff that we put in our body um, and made us very presently aware of not on standing up for ourselves. So I stood up for a decision that I had to do and I lost, um, you know, I lost my job. Many people uh, told me like, you're insane. Like, how can you leave something not knowing if you're going to get hired somewhere else? How can you leave something? How are you going to pay your bills? Where are you going to live? What are you going to do? You know, like these are all the stories. This is the fear that people have, which is why so many people did what they did, right? Me, on the other hand, I had to truly surrender i didn't know if i was going to get hired somewhere else i didn't know where the hell i was going to live i didn't know how the hell i was going to do everything that i've managed to accomplish now i didn't know that i didn't but the gut feeling of this is the right choice versus what is the safest choice that's where i had to differentiate and had to overcome that fear you know that word right because that word to me is you either face everything and run or you face everything and rise so how you choose to create your story is all on you I chose to rise I chose to rise out of the occasion I chose to stand for myself I chose to stand for my body I chose to stand for my convictions I chose to not know where I was going to be at the end of the day but have trust and faith in the universe that I will find it. Things will open. Things will make way. Things will flow when they need to flow. And they did. They truly did. And 
that was my biggest lesson into now just being very open and flowing. Certain things are meant to be, certain things are not meant to be. Certain people are meant to come into your life. Certain people are meant to exit your life. Certain jobs, professions, situations are meant to come to give you the lessons at that present moment in time. And then they go, you know, it's more trusting, more trusting and taking that energy of, I can't do it. This is scary. Um, what if I fail? You know, what if someone's going to look at me a certain way? Taking those stories that we create that try to stop us from tapping into our own self and tapping into yourself first and being like, it's okay if I fit. If I fall and fail, who cares? I'm failing forward. I'm not failing backwards. I'm failing in the progress of, of creating a shift, of learning a lesson, of learning a new way. Because every time I have failed in certain things in my life, I learned a different way. I learned a new way of how to, of how to express myself or how to overcome a challenge. That's okay. It. That makes a lot of sense. Wow. There's, there's a lot there. Um, would you say a lot of, would you say this ties into your intuition, your knowing? I think a lot of it does tie into your, your intuition. And the more you kind of like sit with your intuition, listen to your intuition, learn how to differentiate your your gut feeling versus your your head, you know, like when you operate from your heart space, right? It's an immediate answer, not an answer that takes moments and time to evolve and to work its way out. Those kind of answers are normally answers that you're operating from ego. Those are answers that you're operating from the head. You know, when okay. it's like you sitting down and like, hey, should I start a podcast show? What was the immediate answer? Versus what was the answer after like talking about about it to yourself for five minutes on maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't, you know, it's like, it's, it's listening more towards to that immediate response when you want to do something big, when you want to overcome something big, it's tapping into that immediate response of what that answer is, whether it's something comfortable or not comfortable. So a hundred percent, it has to do with intuition. <laughs> And the more you use it, the better you get at it. I completely agree. So you would say, if I'm understood this correctly, that your immediate response is what you consider to be the intuition. Correct? My immediate response to all my things. When I just go into my heart space, I ask the question, the answer is received. I go with that. I do. Okay. Do you have any suggestions or tips maybe for any of the listeners as to how to tap into their intuition more? Breath work. <laughs> that is true. I agree. I mean, in all honesty, your breath is your greatest vitality. Our breath, our, our breath, our breath is our life force. It's tapping into the greatest medicine that we have. It's not going out, you know, and trying different, whether it's different like plant medicines, whether it's different experiences, which is all great because those are all just tools that you add to your belt. But however, trust that within your own vessel, your own body, your own being, you have the greatest medicine and it is your breath. And when you guide yourself through these journeys, and you know it because you became a facilitator. So you understand the impact of how breath work can evolutionarily evolve and change you. It has absolutely expanded my being in a, in a, in a beautiful, blissful way to where I know every time I go onto a journey and I start breathing with the intention, I start bringing in things that I want to create, things that I want to let go, things that I want to call in, things that I want to manifest, things that I want to, I want to face. When I go in through those intentions, I'm truly breathing and rewiring, literally rewiring my own DNA. Like I am the surgeon that is going into my body with every breath that I breathe in and I'm tapping into those areas that I know that I need to work on, attune my frequency to those areas, 
blast my breath into those areas to create an actual complete shift into my being, into my space so I can operate as me. And this is like the best version of me. I'm showing up for the universe as my highest and greatest self. And 100% been tapped in since I've been doing breath work. Wow. Okay. No, honestly, I I completely agree with that. My life has changed a lot, even prior to teacher training, just from from when I started practicing breath work consistently and regularly. I quit my job on the spot. The, <laughs> yep, with no plan whatsoever, <laughs> and. I was, I was at work for almost two months, but it was just that inner knowing mm. that I knew I love the field, but this location is not it. I'll figure it out somehow, but it's, this is not it. Yeah. And it was almost six weeks later, I got a new job doing the same type of work at a better company for different attorneys that I love making more money, not that money is even anything, but it's better in every aspect. And six weeks prior to that, everybody thought I was crazy for quitting my job. And I feel like intuition, a lot of times, it doesn't always make sense to you or to people on the outside. It's it's just something you know. And it it, there might be no logic to it whatsoever, but you just feel it inside of you somehow. You do. It's like what Abraham Hicks says, right? It's tapping into that internal guidance system. Your intuition is your internal knowing and awareness. It is your guidance system that guides you. If it feels good, it sounds good, it tastes good. If it If it makes you joyful, if it makes you blissful, if it makes you happy, if it makes you freaking horny I don't care it's that sensation that vibration that's what you need to complete your body your being into if you stay within that frequency your body's frequency your aura expands and by it expanding it's going to expand to the people next to you to the people the next states from you continents around you it expands it magnifies because it is like 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 I always say love is the highest vibration you tap in and you tune in your body into love everything everything will emanate and expand from there your intuition your inner knowing your mind everything becomes more expansive because now you're in the vibration of the universe you're in that harmonics that vibration of this earth the galactic freaking atmosphere the galaxies the fifth dimension tenth dimension you're in vibration to all of it into the sequence of where we all harmonize so that's like that's that's the key. That's the key right there. Your intuition will only get stronger the more you practice and you stay in that vibration. And that's not saying though, like let's not get it twisted. Man, there's, do people shift you sometime from here and there? Can people knock you out of your vibration sometime? Yeah. We're human. Absolutely. Now, how do you get yourself back sometimes it's breath work sometimes it's even taking a few deep breaths in the moment depending on where I am or the situation that's transpiring even a few deep breaths letting some sighs out in the moment and releasing the stagnant energy mm. helps me significantly same thing I had I worked last night I had a co-worker let's say um she she triggered she triggered certain parts of me that you know Puerto Rican hood is <laughs> or back in the day chip somebody you know like real up in the face however I had to step back and I had to be real with myself. I had to be very genuine with myself. I had to pull myself out. And I, I scream shake. 
So I take a big, like a big ass breath and I'm just like, ah, you know, and I just let it out. But by me letting it out, it like completely just like vibrates out my body. And the anger that I had, the frustration that I had, whether it was still present, it was completely reduced to where now I'm not allowing this to completely interfere with the rest of my 12 hours that I have to be here. You know, so it's, it is, it's like certain quirks. I, I either, I do, I shake, you know, I like shake it all out, shake my hands, shake my legs, you know, I yell or I take a big inhale and any kind of way to kind of give your body a quick reset on when you are confronted in those situations sometimes where people are gonna they're gonna tap into and trigger you <laughs> not always in the most delicious vibrational feel but it's whether you stay in it or you change it that's very true very true so i want to take a little tone on things. We talked a little bit about fear, a little bit about intuition. I want to kind of touch upon, in your opinion, how you would suggest or how you do and have gone about creating a new mindset for yourself, how you suggest people do it, however you want to take that. Change your story, change your life. Um, in all my breathwork sessions that I've been leading this year, I think it has been the biggest, most valuable message that I can give anyone. Every day that we are put here is a new day, a new day, a new beginning, right? Yesterday was yesterday is gone. What you have right now is the present, your present moment and your present awareness. How are you going to make a change? today that can continue the vibration of what it is that you see yourself so what vision do you have as your like when you look at yourself as your highest self or you have goals in mind everybody has to have goals right what goals do you have that you see yourself right so it's attuning to that that you live it in the now you know like I'm a traveling, I call myself the traveling healer. I'm an alchemist. I I bridge people out of lower vibrations, open up the vibrational frequency and have them connect to their higher self. You know, it's it's training your mind to always be on that vibration. I always say be on the vibration of love. Things are not always going to be love, love, love. But yes, you can change at the immediate time, the immediate moment something happens to you, whether it's a good news or a bad news or a sad news on how you continue to feel. That is where the that's where the biggest impact is on changing your mindset, because, yeah. IRS gives me a freaking bill that I got to pay 10 grand. At first, I was like, um, the hell? I don't want to pay that shit. You know, I got angry. Like, why? Why well, I got to pay this? Why well, I got to pay that? I, I can stay in that vibration or I can choose to be like, somehow, some way that's going to figure itself out. It is not for me to stress myself about it now. It is not for me to get angry about it now because for one, it's not going to serve me and it's not going to, it's not going to change the story. It's not going to change the vibration. But if I stick in it and if I stay soaking in it, then guess what? That's exactly what I'm going to continue to attract. So when you're faced with an opposition, when you're faced with a challenge in your life, you either receive the message, whether you learn it at that present moment in time, that's fine. Or you stay in that or you change it. You know, if, if you're happy, stay in that vibration. If something happens to you to where you wake up in a bad mood, it's your choice if you're going to continue the rest of the day being in a bad mood. It's your choice, always. Free will, it's your choice. It's your choice at the end of the day how you are going to remain, how you are going to create the vision, how you are going to create the impact. 
it's all on you. It's all on how you want to be the change for the world that you see in yourself. So it's practicing it, practicing it on a daily routine. You know, we have a lot of the times it was uh, getting out of the mindset of, of judgment, getting out of the mindset of judging myself, getting out of the mindset of judging others, getting out of the mindset of being so hard on myself, you know, getting out of the mindset of loving myself and knowing that I'm perfectly perfect the way that I am with all my imperfections and not allow the, the hurdles that come in my life to take me out to knock me down and make me self-sabotage me and not believe that truly this lesson came in order for me to learn, expand, and grow. You know, you just got to be gentle. Be gentle with the process. We're learning. It's not going to happen overnight. But at least if you put the intention on changing your intention it's changing the vibration already within your body and you'll start seeing changes so whether creating movement going to the gym dancing singing i don't know cooking eating listen food is my love language i love it it's all me it's it's finding those things right it's finding it's finding those things that you need to do that help reset you when you have moments that you're just like, shit, what the hell did I do now? Or shit, how am I going to get out of this? It's changing your, literally changing, changing your story. So that is the best way that I can say you, you attack anything in life. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Would you say... You've changed your story? story. My story has changed. It has. Um, coming from a person who didn't see her worth, um, who didn't see the value that she carried within herself, who was so hard on herself so long, um, very judgmental on herself, you know, because I would always compare my my being to other people. You know, so I would, if I don't see myself here at a certain time frame or I didn't see myself making so much money, I would be so hard on myself and make my own, I would self-sabotage myself and feeling like a failure or feeling like I need to work hard and push hard and always on that overdrive mindset, the hustling mindset, you know, the hustling mindset is a, it's, it's still operating on a lack. And changing my tune, changing me and giving my worth, knowing that the message that I have will be received by everyone who needs to receive it. The work that I do, whatever I put my mind and energy into, know that it's going to make a huge impact into anyone because I'm doing it off of the vibration of love. It's believing in me believing in the value that I bring to humanity and understanding that I, my mission here was for a purpose. I came, I came into this timeline for a purpose. That to me was the greatest download I received during one of my sessions in Breathwork. It was, you made the choice. You made the conscious choice to come into this timeline. So either you're going to step up to the plate and serve, serve humanity, serve the world and make the change that you want to, or you just remain like that drone, like that zombified person and continue repeating these cycles that will never break until you choose to change. Is that vibe, baby? Is that vibe? <laughs> no, I have I can... my vibe. I have changed my vibe. I have changed my outlook I have changed my feelings I have changed me in a very expansive way but it all had to do with trusting and surrendering makes a lot of sense I completely agree in my opinion that ties into anything you want to change in life even even addicts for example 
until or unless they are ready to change that aspect, it's not going to change. You can go to all the rehabs you want. You can move. You can do whatever you want to do. But if you don't want to make the change, you're not going to. It's 100% true. You know, it's all about m many people who, who go through that journey of feeding that 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 response that makes them keep going back to certain habits that are not you know that are not meant for their growth it's to a lot of the times numb away pain it's to not feel and you got to feel it to heal it you know that's why i love breath work you have to feel it to heal it when you're breathing you're breathing through your journey you're breathing through some uncomfortable shit you're breathing through your shadows you're breathing through these stories that self-sabotage your ass throughout your whole entire journey and experience you're breathing through these moments you're facing it you're facing your fears. You're facing your stories. You're facing your life. And at that moment in time, as you take your breath, it's your choice. Either you're going to baby it, you're going to you know, soften it down, you're going to play it safe like you've been playing it, or you're going to have a freaking breakthrough. And it's all about how you choose to break through. Either you break through, or you just don't break through at all. That's very true. I completely agree. So I want to transition slightly. This kind of ties into what we were talking about. But a lot of people talk about what they call an aha moment. Moment when something just clicked for them. Maybe there was some different type of transition Something happened often and they just knew something different either about themselves, about the world around us. Would you say you've had an aha moment? I've had a, I've had a lot of aha moments. Would you care to share any of them? Um, I will 100% say my biggest aha moment um, it's so crazy because everything always is that it's a breath word. <laughs> um, all right, here it goes. This is the first one that came. Got it. My biggest aha moment was when I truly understood that my breath was my medicine. And I have gone through the journeying experiences of trying a variety of different plant medicines, psychedelics, different journeys, different experiences, always trying to, um, with the intention as I'm going in through these journeys, like trying to tap into my greatest and highest self. Always, that was like always my intention. I want to, oh, there's got I want to tap into like that, that infinite Liz. I want to tap into you know, understanding my purpose, understanding my life, understanding, understanding, understanding. I want more knowledge, more knowledge, more knowledge. And the biggest aha moment, one, one session that I was having was you never received the information that you truly wanted to receive because the information was always within you. You carry your greatest medicine and it's always falling back to your own breath. That was absolutely expansive, transformative. It shifted how I do my breathwork sessions to this day. It gave me so much respect for how beautifully we were designed and created and how freaking expansive we as human beings are and how powerful, how freaking powerful you, me, everyone is. Hell yes, that was a huge aha moment. Huge aha moment that I honor. I truly honor. And I'm so, I'm just so grateful that I found, I found this. I'm so grateful that I found this tool. I'm so grateful that I get to sit with this tool. I'm so grateful that we get to lead people using it. Like, this is freaking amazing. It's amazing. I can't, I can't stop smiling. And I can't, I, I'm happy. Well, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. What's your aha moment? I said, you listen, you want to you talk about my aha moment? All right, well, all right, Mander. Okay, what's your aha moment? Um, 
I would say, well, this is the first one that came to my mind. I don't know if it's the biggest one, but this is the first thing that came to my mind was honestly me going to Utah for teacher training because I had never traveled on a plane by myself before. Mm. So I got a lot of other people's fear even besides my own coming into me because I, you tell your friends and your family you're going to Utah to breathe with some people you've never met. <laughs> and some of them look at you like, you're nuts. They do. Yeah. And it was just something that I knew. I I even, it was an aha moment because I was like, I'm going to Utah. Like, you can support me or you cannot, but I'm going to Utah. If I make it back, great. If I don't, I did what I needed to do. And look at how beautiful, <laughs> like, for everyone who's tuning in and tapping in into this beautiful vibration, this goddess has gone through some absolute huge, huge transformations since you decided to say yes to your growth. And I got to be the witness of a lot of it. And I'm that's why I'm like so... I'm so grateful. I'm truly grateful for the work that all of us are putting in. You know, we're all showing up for ourselves. We're all wanting to make a change. We're all wanting to become an impact and trying to find a way to become the biggest impact that you can on humanity. Like how, how beautiful is that vibration? So, you know, that's why I always hope when we, when I go on, um, on, you know, podcasts and shows and I, I give my story, I give my vibes that it reach one person and that person that it reaches will make a change and they reach another person and that person that it reaches, they make a change and then they reach another and it just magnifies on that scale because that's that's the intention that I go in with everything that I do. It's always about making the biggest impact universally wide. You know, and I'm grateful, and I and I see you, sis. I see. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of everything that you have done. Thank you. But no, I I feel the same way. Honestly, after after I tried breathwork for the first time, I fell in love. I went back, did it again a week later, and I was like, I I need to teach this to people. I don't even know how I'm doing this, but I need to. Sh even if I show one person this, I I need to show this to someone, and. Fast forward and here we are. Absolutely. It's like that movie, if, have you ever, it's an old movie, it's a, it's, a, it's a little older movie. Um, Not trying to date myself either, uh, but Pay It Forward. Pay It Forward, was, it was a movie that was created on the movement of impact in one person. One person that you choose to give them an opportunity. So, you know, it's like, if you see a homeless person on the street and you pay it forward and give them a bike or pay it forward and give them some clothes to where you're giving them an opportunity for them to feel that vibration of love, that acceptance, that, that joy. So then they can pass it forward and keep creating that wave, that wave on making an impact, a valuable impact. That movie was absolutely like the best movie I've ever seen because that's why I got into, you know, the field of medicine to begin with, because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to impact everyone, everyone. I want to love everyone. I want to hug everyone. I want to just give all my vibrations of to every single person that I meet. Why not? And it feels good to me. So I know that it's good. I know that it's operating off of my highest and greatest good. So yeah, it's all for evolutionary change on how we're going to change humanity. That's how I see things. My things are always big, big and expansive. Wow. Okay. I, I have not seen the movie, but yeah. I will look that up and I will have to watch that. So I want to backtrack a little bit. We talked a little bit about where you are now, about your career field, a little bit about 
how you got to some of where you are now, but I want to go a little further back. So can you, whatever you're comfortable with um, sharing with this, but can you discuss a little bit about your family dynamic, your childhood, and kind of how you got to where you are prior to being fully here? I mean, I I am Latina, I'm Puerto Rican, and um, I was raised with my mother. My mom is a single mother um, who went through in this journey because she's still going through some of it <laughs> whether she likes it or not um she had to raise six of us on her own a lot of wounds a lot of relationship wounds a lot of um wounds of not being able to speak your truth wounds of not being able to be yourself wounds of being judged that kind of wound, you know, passed down to my older sister, passed down to me, passed, it, it, it does make an impact of, of, of you. It makes an impact on your life. You know, um, the struggle with money, we didn't have the blessings, you know, that I guess people can call it to be abundant and, you know, lucrative. You know, my mom was taking care of us, you know, and she provided for us the best, the best ways that she could. You know, so I always had that hustle and mindset of like working multiple jobs, working, doing this, doing that, finding ways of always trying to bring in money. But it was definitely always a hustling, hustling mindset of needing to put in the hours, needing to put in the work, needing to put this and that in order to receive, you know. So my journey and even religion, I was raised in the Adventist. I was raised under a certain paradigm um, to where you had to follow certain rules, um, certain, you have to have certain views, certain rules, certain mindset in order for you to be saved. Like all these kind of limiting beliefs, they're all limiting beliefs, were the foundation to, to me. So when I went through the period of why am I here? Like, what is my purpose? Why, why am I going through all this? Why is all this happening to me? What I was going through all that, that dark phase in, in, in my life, I had to, yo, I had to, I had to sit, I had to go back into every single thing that I mentioned that was a triggering response of limiting belief. I had to go back and I had to sit with my shit. I had to sit with my shit. I had to sit with a lot of these stories. I had to, um, make it very clear to my family that, you know, I'm going through my moments and there's certain things that I'm not going to agree with that I don't have to agree with. And that should never interfere with how I live my life or how they live their life. It's being more authentic and sovereign in my voice and not hiding or being worried or concerned because I believe and see things a different way that they're not going to accept me. You know, and stand in my ground standing my ground like my mom is a tough my mom my mom is a baddie she a tough chick and if there's one thing that she told me is yo stand my ground so there's certain things that within my own conviction that I am who I am and whether you accept it or not that has nothing to do with me that's your story versus my story my family has become much more accepting um much more open to just receiving me when I'm present to just love me how I am so it's definitely been definitely been a journey. It's definitely been a journey of of some shadow work, <laughs> some shit that I had to break, fears that I had to break, stories that I had to break, people that I had to I had to cut off. And it's all in all in love and all in love and all in you know it's for my highest and greatest good. It's the story that I'm creating. It's not theirs. It's that makes sense. Okay. Thank you for sharing all that. So you discussed how shadow work helped you with a lot of that process. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? I'm sitting in your pain. On sitting in, in 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 your pain, on sitting in your moments that hurt, 
You know, if if you talk to, especially when it comes to family, a lot of the times your family is going to trigger you. Your family is definitely going to, these are the people that you're closest to. This is the people that you, you, you have been the most intimate with, the most, they know you. They're, they have the most deep rooted connection to you. And it's just sitting through, it's sitting through that pain, understanding mm -hmm. the pain and giving love and honor to that pain, but then changing that pain. Cause I don't want to stay in this, in, in the, you know, my mom, my mom got cheated on, you know, and, you know, she also went through, you know, physical abuse, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just like, it, it the pattern started repeating within my own siblings going through the same story and then I'm going through the same story well when are we going to change it or we're going to just sit here and be like we're victims we're victims because it wasn't our fault it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't us but poor me poor me no it doesn't work that way it works in the way of you accepting that this happened and I understand it let me feel it let me understand it let me process the grief let me process the discomfort let me process the agony and the pain but then changing it and making it a different story to where that happened and made me the person who I am I'm much more stronger I'm very much more resilient you know I'm very much more assertive with my voice I'm very much more I stand in my own ground in my own power there's a lot of beautiful things that came out of me transmuting that dark space. And that's where shadow work comes in. Shadow work is, it is, it's, you need the dark with the light. You can't have one without the other. You need the yin to the name, to the yang, masculine with feminine, dark with light. You need, you need these oppositional fields to balance everything out in harmony. So you have to, and not everything is like, what's the word called? Like roses now. Shits and rainbows. I don't know. Gummy bears and gumdrops. And I don't care. Whatever, whatever, whatever epiphany you want to you want to put in when that comes in. But yeah, it's sitting. It's sitting with your discomfort, your pain, your traumas, and your wounds. And either journaling, breathing, meditating, dancing, singing, whatever outlet you have in a that's going to positively allow you to transform and transmute that step into it wow thank you makes a lot of sense listen at the end of the day we got to feel it to heal it and one of the best ways to do it is to breathe me and you are huge advocates for that and that's why I always tell everybody, when in doubt, tap back into that breath. Always tap into your breath. Your breath is your resource. Your breath is your guide. Your breath is your tool. Your breath, you need it. You need it to survive. You can't live without the breath. So become more tuned into, into you. And everything else will start working its way out. Everything else will start making much more sense as you carry on in your journey, in your spiritual journey. You know, I think that's the best way that we can, you know, like tie this all in and end it is just breathe. <laughs> no, I, I completely agree with that. Even like I was mentioning earlier, even taking a deep breath when you get upset or frustrated or stressed, even if it's not doing actual breath work, even becoming more aware of unclenching your jaw, taking a few deep breaths here and there. When you get that email that frustrates you, taking a deep breath and pausing before you reply. Mm. Small little things can have a big impact. I actually was told something and this comment changed my life. But as long as you have your breath, you have options. Mm. You're, you're not stuck. You're still alive. You're still breathing. You can make a change. You can go down a different path. You can walk down a different road and you got options. If you're breathing, there's options. Once you're not, we don't got options, but up, up until then you got all the options in the world. It's it, blessfully, blissfully, beautifully true. <laughs> I can't, I can't. It's absolutely true. If you're breathing, you can make the decision on how you're going to choose tune and change your frequency 
Completely agree. So I really appreciate you being on the show, Liz. I super, super appreciate all your wisdom, all your insight. But I do have one last question for you. So now, so now I did want to approach this in a way where it wasn't only questions from me with a little bit of an outsider tuning in, I guess you could call it. So I asked one of my best friends to come up with a question that she would ask a guest that she has no idea who the guest is, just something that she might want to know a random person from a random person. So what has been the best decision you have made in your life, in your opinion, so far, and why? There's this word. I have this word on my bracelet. The word on my bracelet is infinite. The best decision that I have made in my life is when I took the conscious decision to subconsciously tap into my infinite self is understand that I'm an infinite being and there is no limitations. There is no boundaries that I cannot break through. There is no mountains that I cannot see the peak and beyond. Um, The world is the beautiful blessing that it's my playground where I can play and I can manifest and create whatever I desire because we, me, you all, we're all infinite vibrations, infinite beings of energy. And energy is never created nor destroyed. It is always present. And how you choose to manipulate and move it, create it and expand it is all on you. Wow. That was a great decision that you made. <laughs> I don't even know what else to say of that, but that was great. Wow. I am I'm very glad that you, that you were able to make that decision. So Liz, I super appreciate your time and being on here. So if anybody listening is interested in connecting with you, I will put info in the notes, but where can they find you? Y'all can find me, Luminous Liz, on Tox Chemist, whether it's Facebook, whether it's IG, um, Linktree, all my, all, they're all Tox Chemist. It's a two degrees that I merged into the alchemist that I am. So um, my IG is uh, at, at ToxChemist.com. No, that's not my IG. <laughs> it's at Tox Chemist. My email is tox, tox, toxchemist at gmail.com. I'll put it in the notes. Put it in. It's tox chemist, guys. The toxicologist, the chemist, merge into the spiritualist. Hey, <laughs> that's it. But you can reach out to me on IG. You can reach out to me on Facebook. Um, I'm just always one responsible. <laughs> well, thank you, Liz. I super appreciate that. And thank you, all of you who took the time to listen to this podcast. I hope you learned something. I hope it helped you and was super informative. If you did enjoy it, if you would like the show, give us a five-star rating, leave a review. I would super appreciate it. It will also help me get the podcast out to more people. Hey, share love for my girl. Put my girl out there. Go, Manders. Thank you, Liz. I super appreciate you very much. And I love you, my dear. Thank you all for listening to the show. And stay tuned for the next episode of Mando's Mindset.